What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I'm back with another Soprano log. Uh, this time we're looking at the penultimate episode of the second season, The Knight in White Satin Armor. Um, we got a lot of things going on this episode. Um, it opens with Tony helping Janice move into um, their new house. Even though he's being supportive of the marriage by like throwing an engagement party and helping them move, Tony is not happy about this marriage. He really doesn't like Richie, um, especially after all the trouble Richie has caused him, including continuing to deal drugs along the garbage route. And because of this, Tony denies Richie a bid for a garbage contract that would have brought him a lot of money. Um, so we can see the tensions really starting to boil over. Richie is really upset by this, and he goes to Junior. Now, Junior is also having troubles. He's got really high legal fees with his upcoming trial, um, and the drugs that they were dealing are helping him pay for all of this. So upset with how Tony's been, you know, treating them, they decide to conspire against him um, and take him out. Uh, meanwhile, Tony breaks up with his longtime girlfriend, Irina. He's not enjoying being with her anymore. Um, she's too helpless, too needy, and dependent on him. Uh, so he decides to break it off. Carmela notices uh, her perfume on his clothes. Um, so she realizes that he's still seeing her. She ends up trying to commit suicide. Um, she takes a lot of pills and, and drinks some vodka um, and ends up in the hospital. Tony gets the call that she tried to commit suicide and, and Carmela hears this too. Um, and she's just really upset by this. Um, she doesn't like this coming into their lives, um, especially since she tried to have an affair too with Vic Musto uh, to kind of get back at Tony. Um, but Vic didn't want to see her um, after he learned who her husband is. Um, so Carmela's just really frustrated with, you know, where her life is right now. Uh, Tony tries to get Irina into therapy. He thinks it might help her out and stop her from trying to commit suicide again. Um, but she refuses. Um, being Russian, she doesn't trust psychiatrists because in, in her country they're used to um, basically land people in prison. Uh, th there's a funny line where Tony's saying that um, he went to a lot of trouble to get the psychiatrist's phone number. Uh, when in reality, all he did was ask Melfi for the number, so it wasn't any trouble at all. Um, but Tony's just trying to exaggerate um, the amount of effort he put into this, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, meanwhile, Pussy wants to become an FBI agent. You know, he's gone full over to the FBI. Um, he hates La Cosa Nostra. His handler thinks it's a case of um, Stockholm Syndrome. He can't really balance out his two lives. One is a mobster, one is an informant. Um, so he's trying to reinvent himself as this, um, you know, police officer. And he's thinking that, you know, after he does his time, you know, he'll be able to, you know, work with the FBI, work with law enforcement, um, which is not going to happen. Uh, he finds out that Christopher is planning to hijack a truck of Pokemon cards. Um, and he follows Christopher, you know, taking notes on his on his recorder like he's an FBI agent. Um, and he's, he's trying to get more information, again, to be an asset to the FBI. Um, he ends up running over um, a kid on a bike, and that kid ends up in a coma, which lands Pussy in really big trouble. And his FBI handler, Skip, has to finally sit him down and tell him, look, you're never going to be an FBI agent. That's not going to happen. He's got to stop living these delusions. But Pussy's just really upset, and he's realizing that he can't reinvent himself. The choices he's made are going to stick with him forever. Meanwhile, uh, Richie approaches Albert to see if he'll go along with the plan to take Tony out. Um, apparently, the Barisi crew, uh, led by Larry, who's in prison right now, is the biggest crew in the family, um, which is interesting because we actually never see any Barisi associates on the show. Albert decides he's not going to go against Tony, um, especially with Larry's trial coming up. They don't want to go into that not knowing you know, if the leadership is stable. Um, so Richie is shot down. This makes Junior realize that um, Richie is not a leader. The Capos don't respect him, um, and he won't be able to take over. Uh, so Junior decides to stick it out with Tony, um, even though he's still upset with Tony's treatment. So later at the doctor's office, he tells Tony about Richie's plan to have him killed. And Tony rewards this information by giving him more of the cut that Tony stole from him, basically. Uh, basically, he went from 5% to, to 75 so... Apparently, Tony's life is worth two and a half percent, but that's settled. Tony decides that he has to now take Richie out um, before Richie makes a move against him. Uh, meanwhile, Richie and Janice are having dinner. Janice angers Richie by talking about his son. Um, his son, little Ricky, is a dancer. He's really into ballroom dancing. 
And this really upsets his father. He thinks his son is homosexual. Um, and Janice angers him by, you know, saying that it's not a big deal, even if he was gay. Um, it's pretty funny that Richie doesn't like his son. He seems like a good kid from what we saw in this episode. There's a scene where he's like helping clean their house um, and he's going to work on the gutters, too, which shows that he's he's a responsible kid. And it's funny that um, Richie wishes he had a son like Jackie Jr., even though we're going to learn later on that, you know, Jackie Jr. is a complete shithead. So it's funny that Richie just idolizes the masculine um, Jackie Jr. rather than his own kind of more feminine son. But Richie hits Janice when she says that it doesn't matter if the son is gay or not which Janice is really upset by this. So she grabs his gun and ends up shooting him twice in the chest um, and killing him. And Richie dies actually really ironically because, you know, if you remember at the beginning of the season, he told Christopher um, that he's not allowed to hit a woman unless he's married to her. That's an old school Italian rule. Uh, Richie violates this by hitting Janice before they're married. Um, So he kind of died an ironic death in a way. But Janice is really upset. This was just kind of a heat of the moment thing. And she calls Tony to come over and help her, um, you know, get rid of the body. Um, So they end up cutting up Richie's body at Satriali's using the same equipment they used to cut the meat, which is absolutely disgusting. Um, They dispose of the body. Um, They send Janice uh, back to Seattle. But as they're leaving the house, uh, Tony runs into his mother. And this is the first time they've spoken all season. And they have this, you know, really heated exchange And it's one of the last times they're ever going to talk to each other, uh, which we'll see next season in in season three. But she she ends up laughing at Tony um, as he falls down the stairs. Uh, Now, Tony mentions a similar incident that that the whole family was laughing when the dad fell down some stairs. Um, But it just goes to show you what is what a sick and twisted woman Livia was. She's laughing at her son, you know, falling down in his misfortune. Um, So she's she's just really fucked up in the head. Um, But Janice ends up going on a bus back to Seattle. Tony goes back home and tells Carmela um, that Richie is gone. And Carmela tells him that um, after Meadow graduates, she wants to go on a trip to Rome. And she kind of sarcastically says to Tony that he has to let her go or she's going to kill herself. Kind of referencing, you know, Arena's uh, suicide attempt. Uh, So she's just throwing all this shit that he's done back in his face. Um... And Tony, at the end of the episode, is just, like, reflecting on how shitty his life is right now. All the trouble he's he has going on. So, really great episode. Uh, I'm really sad to see Richie go. You know, rest well, sweet prince. We hardly knew you. What an absolutely great character. He's one of my favorite villains in the season. He just has this incredible intensity and uh, some some of the greatest lines in the entire show. So, yeah, it was great to see him while we had him. And stay tuned for the season two finale. That's going to be an amazing episode as well. Coming up soon. Thanks.